Welcome back to the Sci-Fi Junkie. My name is Neil, patient zero of this channel. Join me for another review of Star Trek Picard. In this episode, I get some names right, learn to speak in sentences, as well as discussing the highs and lows of episode five, Stardust City Rag. And I'll end by explaining why this is the best Trek yet. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the notification bell so you will know when my next video is live. Welcome back to the Sci-Fi Junkie. Last episode, I raised my first real negative about the show, pointing out some saggy plotting that didn't seem to fit with the plot and pace of the first three episodes. So I sat down a couple of days later than usual to watch episode five with a little trepidation, super keen not to see my track hoops dashed as they have been elsewhere in the Trekiverse. And luckily I can report that my concerns were unfounded and this episode wasn't just a return to the previous form, but pushed things forward to a whole new level. Firstly, the plotting was a lot tighter, benefiting from the concentration on one storyline, that of Picard locating and throwing Maddox on three clouds. Ably assisted now not just by Raffi, Rios and Agnes, but the recently rescued Seven of Nine. Someone on my Facebook page posted a comment where they worry really that Seven might start to dominate, but again, I think the character was handled incredibly well, with Jay Ryan showing off her acting chops with Patrick Stewart. Now, talking of Patrick Stewart, the best part of this episode is where Picard has to go onto Three Cloud in what can only be described as a camp pirate disguise. And he delivers a performance not as Patrick Stewart, but as Picard, which was wonderfully wooden. I love it when they can inject a nice dose of humour alongside the seriousness. Now, as always with Rescue Mission, things don't go according to plan. We have two significant plot twists. One is largely around character development, while the second, in the closing seconds, is that classic cliffhanger from Trek of Ode. Moments after that are a good example and reason not to dump entire seasons in one hit. Instead, we can speculate and discuss for seven whole days while we wait for the next episode to drop. Like I said, the focus upon the three-claim mission really helped and this was a nice change from the previous episodes that necessarily jumped from Picard on Earth to the artifact in Romulan space and back and forwards in time. So nice to see that the series as a whole, even at these early stages, isn't afraid to play a little with the formula. We also got some nice little personal development touches for both Agnes and Raffi. Again, really happy to see effort being put consistently in giving us insight to the inner workings of the other supporting characters. Something often neglected, which results in us not giving a damn when one of them is suddenly vaporised for making Picard's Earl Grey a little too hot. Now that's not a spoiler, that's not going to happen. As that point marks the midpoint of the season, it'll be interesting to see whether this new tightness of focus remains for the last five episodes. As we do only have five episodes remaining, I do wonder how far they can push the overarching plot lines of Romulan and Federation involvement with the synth malfunction and Starfleet's apparent loss of its core mission. And while I'm happy to see this evolve through a second and third season, if season one just results in saving Soji, this could be an anticlimactic end to the season. Now, I cannot believe that when they started production, they would have chosen to end on a whimper, so hoping that they can once again surprise me. It's so lovely to be su surprised in a positive way. While I'm loath to offer too much praise due to my cultural indoctrinated Britishness, I have to say this is the best track I've seen in a long time. And I mean a long, long time. On a personal level, it's comparable to the best of both worlds, part one, or first contact if I was to pick a movie equivalent. Yes, I know they are all Borg related, but that's not surprising as it's arguable that the Borg and Q are the most iconic adversaries in the next generation, and I hope to see Q return in a future episode too. The reason for such high praise comes from the creative decisions they have made this far. For this, it does exactly what worked for the next generation, which also faced criticism at launch. Picard acknowledges its predecessors. It honors this, but presents it through the intense lens of a contemporary world. We have a darker, grittier world in which the values of Picard are no longer the Federation's prime directive. It's this mashup of the old and new that has me really excited to see where this will go. It could herald a bright new future for all of Trek. If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, subscribe and comment below. Your support and interest is greatly appreciated. As Leonard Nimoy might well have said, live long and prosper. <laughs>